All right, let's say I went out and I want to purchase, oh, look at there, this 77 inch TV, that looks good. So this is going to be my purchase, which is 14,996.99. And oh, it's even on sale, that's good, right? All right, so let's say that I ain't got this kind of money, so what I wanna do is I wanna put it on my credit card. And let's pretend my credit card charges, I don't know, 13.85% interest. That's a lot of interest, right? So one thing you need to realize is this is annual percentage rate. Typically, when you have a credit card, your interest is charged monthly. So the first thing you're going to want to do is see how much are you really paying monthly, okay? And this is, you could change this to a percent, okay, if you wanted to. Uh, let me get some more decimal places right there. Okay, so this is how much percentage-wise you would be paying monthly. So what I want to do is I want to see, let's say I get this in, I buy it in January, how do you spell January? It looks funny. February, March, something cool with Excel. When you start something like this, check this out. Ooh, doggies. Look at there. Pretty cool. All right. So basically what I want to see is in January, as soon as I purchase this, I owe this much money. So what I'm going to do is reference that cell with an equal sign and then click on it. So this is how much I owe. Now, my first scenario, I'm going to say I'm not going to pay a penny. I just want to see, let, let's pretend that they say you don't have to pay any money, okay, at, for the first year. Now, what a lot of people don't know is when you hear a deal like that, they're still charging you interest if you don't pay it off by the first year. So let's see how this interest is going. So I know how to find interest. I take my principal times my rate. Now, I want to always use the same monthly rate. So in Excel, what you do, and I'm going to press F4 on my keyboard if you have a PC. But if you put this, these dollar signs, you'll see what will happen. I'll be able to copy this straight down. So that's my principal times my rate times my time. Well, I'm just doing this one month at a time. Okay, so that's that's all I'm doing is I'm going to just continue to do this one month at a time. So holy cow, the first month, I'm already going to pay $173 in interest. So what I would do is I'd take how much I purchased the TV for plus my interest, and I could see how much I would owe starting February 1st. So that's what I do. I take and I grab this. So I'm just copying it. Equal. Click on that cell. Now, my formulas here, since I'm, I'm referencing stuff, are will actually move down if I highlight and then I just drag that down. And so now I can see the next month I'm paying a little bit more in interest because my principal's gone up. Now this is the beauty of Excel. Watch this. I can just drag this straight down. And what it does is it copies. You can kind of see what it's doing. It's copying the last end of the month, the last end of the month. And that right there, boy, howdy, is if I don't pay a penny at the end of the year, this 14, about $15,000 TV, you could see is going to cost me over 2,000 in interest. And, and again, this is how people get themselves in trouble, right? Is not paying anything. All right. So let's do a, another scenario. Let's say I'm going to insert a column here. I'm doing this on the fly, so let's see if it works. Let's say every month, well, let's do two columns. I pay 10% of what is owed. So I know how to do that. I take what is owed times 10%. So this is how much I would pay, pretty good, right? Paying 10%. So now my principal changes because I have paid that 
So I just need to be careful here. Now my formula needs to reference what I owe. My monthly is the same, still times one. And now let me just make sure this is right, which it's not. Now I want to take what I owed plus the interest on that. Okay, so the 10% column, that one's going to be pretty easy to just drag straight down because that's just taking 10%. Uh, make it look in here and making sure these are actually getting the value before. This is going to take my principal minus what I paid. So let me drag that straight down. And if you remember, I updated these two. So I need to drag that straight down. So I updated these two, and whenever you see something like that, it just means you need to make the column larger, and I'll, I'll fix this um, here in a minute. So let's look at everything. This is saying, if I could afford to pay 10% a month, it's like a car payment, right? But if I could afford to pay that, then, my, then what I owe and wrap around for the next month actually goes down, right? And so I'm starting to see my bill because I'm making payments and I'm making a pretty substantial, the 10%. And so now at the end of the year, I can see that I've already paid 10,000, this number right here, because this would be what I purchased it for and then how much I have left. And it shows me how much I actually paid. So the cool part of Excel, and I probably should have done this in a cell, let me do this, percent paid, 10%. Let's actually reference this cell. And there's a reason for this. I want to absolute reference it. And so none of these numbers should change. They're all the same. I'm just referencing the cell. But watch this. What if you say, well, but I can only afford 5%. Isn't that cool? Excel updates everything. Okay, I can only pay 1%. I mean, it's pretty cool, right? And so that's kind of the nice part. Let's go back to 5%. The nice part of Excel is the reusability. Let's now say um, another credit card company comes to you or say Amazon comes to you and says, oh, we can do better with this interest and kind of watch these numbers here. Let's put it back up at 10% so we remembered what our number was. Let's say they come along and they say, well, instead of 13.85%, I can give you 11%. So 4860. I mean, there's a difference in how much, I mean, interest is the killer, right? I mean, that's definitely the killer. What if you could find somebody to give you 8%? I mean, that's, this is the nice part. And then, of course, the nice part of Excel is, let's say, you set this spreadsheet up for you. Now you come along and you have another item. I don't know. Maybe it's only $5,000, okay, for the item. And let's go, say, this interest. And so this is, again, the beauty of Excel is if you can learn to set up your spreadsheet where you're referencing cells and not hard coding numbers in. The only place I'm hard coding numbers in because I can change them are, are those. So these are the three things, your principal, your rate, and then in this case, um, how much I'm paying down. Now, one thing you might notice, so if I go back and let's say I pay, all I did was change this to um, 0% down. This was 1496.99. I don't remember what this, oops, I don't remember what this was, like 13.85 or something around there. Another thing you might wonder, well, what about compound interest? Compound interest equals your purchase times 1 plus, it's your rate divided by 12. That's where this is coming in times, remember this is your, how long you have it, okay, 12 months, okay, so um, the N, how, how many times it's compounded a year, and then times one for that many years. If you notice, don't those numbers match? 
So the compound interest formula, you could just use straightforward and you don't have to do all this. The only reason that you would do something like this now is if you come back and say, no, I'm going to pay a percentage down.